Hello and welcome to TechEd LLC. Today we're going to be taking a close look at the drill press. The drill press is one of the most common machines found in workshops in technology classrooms because of its easy use, its ability to drill holes in a very accurate location, as well as depth and angle. Some of the most common bits that are used with a drill press would be the Forstner bit, twist bit, and a hole saw. This is the left side of a drill press. As you can see, this drill press is rather short. This would be considered a bench top model. Let's take a look at the right side. What we're going to do is take a look at our drill press part by part. The first part we're going to look at would be the base. The base of the drill press needs to be bolted down to either the floor or to the bench top. Drill presses are top heavy with a lot of weight up on the top with the motor and the head that's up there. Plus you're going to add material to that and you're going to be pulling down on that lever. A drill press that's not bolted down is very dangerous. Now let's take a look at the column. The job of the column is to attach the base to the head and in the middle it needs to attach the table. The table is able to ride up and down and it is able to do that by using this system over here. This particular model has a rack and pinion system which allows the user to crank this handle here around in the clockwise direction would smoothly raise the table. In the counterclockwise direction it would lower the table. But before they are able to do that they would need to unlock the table which this mechanism is usually found on the other side of the drill press. This tightens up and it squeezes this collar here and when the when it's tightened it squeezes around the column so the table can't move. So it's always important to make sure that the table itself is locked down before you use the drill press. It is important to make sure that you do have a rack and pinion style setup before you loosen this table lock because if you don't and you loosen this, this whole table can go quickly sliding down. If you don't have a good hold on it, you could drop it, you could injure yourself or even break the machine. Another thing that you can do with the table is tilt the angle. Typically underneath, you'll find that there is a bolt and then you're able to loosen that bolt and this will allow you to rotate the entire table. On top of the column is the head. The head has all the other parts attached to it. You have a motor that's in the back, and that motor is attached to a pulley underneath this cover here. The pulley has different grooves in it, and there is a, an opposite pulley on the other side, which is attached to the spindle, which runs through here. The belt can be placed in a couple different positions. Every drill press is a little different. This particular model has three grooves in the pulleys. Right now it's set on the middle one, which would be for average speed. But say you wanted to drill a lot of lightweight, thin material with a small bit. You could speed up your bit by taking the belt and lowering it down to the lower setting. This would increase the spindle speed. To do that, you would loosen this lever here, which would release the tension of the motor, slide your belts down, and then tighten this back up. Or maybe you're drilling something like metal, which is very hard. Or you have a big bit attached to the drill press and it needs to go slow as well. So now you'd need to put the belt all the way in the upper position, and this would help uh, slow down the bit speed. And again, make sure this is tight. Most likely in your tech class or shop class, you won't be adjusting the speed. But if you have to, always ask your instructor to give you some help. The next part we're looking at is the spindle wheel. That's these three levers here. This is what you pull down on to lower the spindle and your bit into the wood. It's pretty easy to use. It is spring-loaded, which helps the drill come back up when you're done. So when you're done with your cut, make sure you don't let go of that lever or the whole thing can kind of snap back up. And again, you might injure yourself or the machine doing so. Some spindles have a lock right here, and this is called a depth stop. So if you want to only drill so far down into a hole, into a piece, that would be how you do that, is set the depth of that bit. Other drill presses have things on the other side which would help set that depth. 
again your instructor will help you set up your drill press the way that you need it. Next we'll take a look at the spindle. Now the spindle is not this part down here. This is called the chuck. The spindle runs from here. It's the spinning shaft that goes all the way up and connects to that pulley up in the top of the head. At the bottom of the spindle is the chuck. Now the chuck is a pretty neat little gizmo that helps grab onto uh, round items, your bits that you'd be putting in there, and it automatically centers them because there's three teeth or jaws that are down here that automatically center it so it doesn't wobble around. You do need to tighten these down when you do that and you'll find that there is a hole which the chuck key can be inserted in and you'll see that there's some teeth that are up here, a gear system that'll help you tighten this up. Again, your instructor can help you with your particular model on this. The switch is typically located on the front of the drill press right up top, red switch. Down is most common off position. Some has push button switches as well. If anything ever goes wrong with your drill press, remember the first thing you do is you shut it off. So quickly shut it off if you have you know anything going badly. On the table, after you drill through your piece of wood, if you didn't have a piece of scrap wood here, you would drill right into the table. Typically there's a hole here to let the drill bit go through, but doing so, especially with wood, as the drill bit exits the wood, it would tear out the wood and it would cause a pretty ugly looking hole as the drill bit exits the wood. So what you'd like to do is put a scrap piece of wood in. And now as the drill bit goes through, there's another piece of material there to help support your workpiece and you won't have as much tear out. Another common item is a backstop attached to this piece of wood. This is especially important when you're working with small pieces that you need to have clamped down but say the piece is big enough where you don't need to use a clamp this backstop can help the piece from spinning around in a circle if it ever did get away from you. Again, follow your instructor's instructions on how to properly use your drill press. Everybody has different rules. They have different clamps that they'll use and different procedures. Also, you want to use your owner's manual and follow the rules that are in there. Next, we'll take a look at some of the safety rules that you should be familiar with while using a drill press. Part two of this video, we'll be going over how to use a drill press safely. The first thing you should do is get permission to use a drill press before going ahead and turning it on. Always ask your instructor if it is the right time for you to use it and if it is set up correctly for you to use. You should also follow the instructor's directions and rules. Make sure that you listen carefully during safety lessons that they'll be giving you during class. Each of these lessons has specific details on exactly what it is that you're doing with a drill press. Every drill press is different, so your instructor really knows what it is that they're doing and what it is that you should be doing, so pay careful attention during those lessons. Some instructors will have you read parts of the owner's manual. If so, you should read and understand those. Others may just be going over the points that you need to know. You should wear your safety glasses while using the drill press and also while using other machines in the shop. This is a very important step that a lot of people sometimes forget to do, but you only get one set of eyes, so make sure you always have your safety glasses on. Remember to remove the chuck key while using the drill press. Sometimes they can shoot out of the chuck as it's spinning, and this can cause serious injury, so never leave it in there. If you're using it, always hold on to it and never let go of it until you remove it from the chuck. Secure the workpiece. It's very important that you clamp down the workpiece or have it in a jig or a fixture. This will ensure that the workpiece stays stable and doesn't get loose and possibly spin around. If this does happen, always remember to turn the machine off. Do not reach in and try to grab the piece. This can result in a bad injury. You should always tie back long hair. Long hair has the possibility of getting wrapped up inside the chuck, which is spinning at a high rate of speed. This can cause severe injury. Remember to secure loose clothing. Baggy clothes, bracelets, watches, strings from hoodies, 
are all dangerous while using the drill press. They can get wound up inside that spindle or chuck just like long hair can. So make sure that you keep them back. Also remember to pull up your sleeves so they're about at your elbow. Use proper speed and feed. This varies with what it is that you're drilling. A big bit can drill a large hole, but it needs to be drilling slower than a smaller bit. Smaller bits can spin a little bit quicker depending on what material it is you're drilling. If you're drilling wood, the bit speed can be a little bit higher than if you're drilling a hard material like metal. There are several factors that determine the speed of the bit. The feed is how fast it is you're plunging into the material. Again, if you're drilling wood or a soft material, your feed speed can be a little bit faster. Your feed when dealing with metal has to be slow as the bit will have a hard time getting through all that material. So watch your instructor carefully during the lessons that they give you in class about how fast that feed should be. You should keep clear of moving parts. Rule of thumb, you don't want to be near the spinning bit. Keep your fingers back as far as possible. You should wait until the machine comes to a complete stop. You simply just shut it off, take the extra second or two until it comes to a stop before removing the workpiece or unclamping it from the jig fixture or from the table. If you do have an accident, report it to your instructor immediately. There could be a couple of things that went wrong. Maybe you goofed up and you hurt yourself, that's one thing. But maybe there's something wrong with the machine or the jig that fixed you or the clamp that holds the piece in place. Your instructor should know about this so they can take action to prevent it from happening to somebody else. And last, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. If you were absent during the lesson in class, you should ask your instructor before going ahead and doing it. So if you're in doubt, don't do it, play it safe. Here is an overview of the drill press safety rules that we just went over. Your instructor may ask you to copy these down into your notebook.